Don't think healthcare professionals have any business experience? Think again. No topic is off limits as we share tales from our brave hosts who will always tell it like it is. We are hashtag no filter healthcare here to guide you through your healthcare journey are your host Taylor Dunn and Tamara Donda. We want to thank our sponsor Uptime Health, the leading healthcare equipment and compliance management software company for bringing this podcast to fruition. Visit UptimeHealth.com to learn more. Let's get started. Welcome to hashtag no filter healthcare. I'm your co-host Taylor Dunn. And I'm your other co-host, Tamara Donda, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about business consultants, when to bring in the pros. (laughs) I think this question often comes up um, in conversations, just, you know, understanding first and foremost, why you should have a consultant, you know, talking about those benefits and risks that are associated with that. And so I think definitely this is a a high topic um, to discuss today. Well, there's so many consultants out there and they all do, they all have their own, you know, specialties and things that they focus on and help companies with. But I think that there is a common theme um, that people don't like to bring up, but it's that they're afraid of consultants, that they think that there's a bad reputation um, alongside what a consultant does. And the goal of this episode is to really um, diminish that viewpoint because we really don't want to encourage that because I've worked with consultants in the past that are just brilliant people and they have so much knowledge and that's truly what they're trying to do. That's the goal of their career is to provide that knowledge and insight from a different perspective and be there with specific goals in mind for the company and a specific timeline. So that's one of the differences is, you know, you, you have your employees, they all have their different skill sets, but consultants do certain things really well. And you have to be able to let those people in, do what they do best, and then they can move on. Yeah. And I think a, a, there's kind of like a new wave as far as consultants go today. I feel like a lot of them are in it for the long haul. They're not just like giving you a book and saying, here's what you need to do and then not help you do it. Um, I've worked specifically with consultants that do that, um, and that they come in and they're like, okay, this is what actually needs to be done. And I'm going to help you get there. Right. Um, instead of just giving you a play by play. So there's one really awesome thing, I think with the, with the changes of how things are operating. And when you think of large companies, especially they get so run down by the day to day that they're not really focused on some of those, you know, actions, Um, And so I think having a consultant come in and actually do um, one part of the business or assess one part of the business can totally change the direction or the course of of your entire company, um, which I think is is super influential. Yeah, I haven't worked with any consultant that hasn't or even spoken to ones that I just know of in the industry that don't value their clients more than anything and are like, you know what? they're my client for life, even though I might not be working with them at this point anymore, I still am here for them. So that's kind of the difference is like you, you build that trust and relationship with that person or with that company of consultants. And you just know um, that they're there for good intentions. Um, However, I will say definitely do your research. That's not going to always be the case. I'm not saying that everyone out there is, um, is a great option. Um, but do your research, you know, look into who you're going to be working with, vet them, you know, talk to other colleagues or people that you trust, people that they've worked with in the past that you know that, you know, they're being truthful about their experience. Um, and it's going to help you make that decision. Yeah, absolutely. And I also think, you know, the way, and you kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, the way to view consultants is as an employee you know, truly when you're vetting your employees to work for your company, do they fit the cultural aspects of your company? Do they um, mesh well with, you know, the personalities? And um, do you think that they're a valuable insight to the direction of the company and where you see yourself in the next couple of years as well? It's not just right now, like what works for me right now, but it's also end goal too. You know, do they do they still see the same vision as me and understand that this is where I want to take the company in the next couple of years? Um, because if they can understand your long term goals, then they can better position you now, right? And I think that's one thing to also note is like 
with any consultant, there's going to be risks, right? <laughs> with any employee, it's a risk. Um, so, you know, like Taylor had mentioned, I think totally taking your time out of your day and actually really assessing the actual needs of your company and long-term goals is so important when trying to figure out who's going to be the right fit. So another thing to consider when you bring out an outside source, like a consultant, um, it sometimes can scare your employees. They feel like they're being watched over. They feel intimidation and like they're doing something wrong. And so someone else has to come in and tell them how to do things right. So you want to make sure that the, the person you're bringing in understands that right off the bat and is willing to make it very clear to your staff um, that they're not there for the wrong reasons. They're there to help them be better. Um, and even you as you know, the person that's hiring them, if you're the CEO or leadership team, you need to make that aware to your team as well and prep them for this, this experience. Um, cause you will have people either way, you will, you will have team members come to you later and be like, I wasn't really sure about that. I, I did not feel great about that. And I felt like I was being judged. So it's always great to just get ahead of that <laughs> and have those conversations and, and set some boundaries as well for the consultant too, and have them understand their role there. Um, and who they can lean on to have true discussions with and, and learn from. So um, I think that's something that's huge as well. But it's really nice because in my experiences with consultants, one of the things I really enjoy is they are constantly networking. And so they're talking to up and coming companies, new technologies, new resources to the industry, because that is a value add. That's one of their uh, strategies that they use because they're like, you know what, I've taken the time to vet these vendors for my clients so that they can understand the value. So they don't have to spend time listening to a demo or a salesperson. I did that for them. And now I have the collateral and the understanding to be able to present this in a meaningful way to see if it's something that works for their organization or not. And they don't ever have to consider talking to the company at all, which is really nice because, <laughs> you know, you just don't have time for that sometimes. So um, it's, I think consultants are definitely worth it. And um, you just have to find the right one that fits your needs and the, um, you know, can evaluate your company and, and help you succeed. Yeah. And it's also okay to use consultants for different things, right? You're going to find that one consultant is really good at one area, and then you're going to find another consultant that's also good in another area. So it's okay to have multiple consultants, just as long as you know that this is my plan. This is where I want to be in the next couple of years. And these are the people that are going to help me get there. So it's really all about just taking that apart as, you know, as a business owner or as a director level position, when you're trying to manage multiple teams figure out the weak spots, the missing, the missing pieces, and realize that there's other people out there that only focus on those missing pieces and can take you to that next level. So um, overall, consultants are a great, great addition to any growing team or even established team um, and know that you don't have to be afraid to jump in. Yeah. And also, I, I wanted to bring up that um, you know, a lot of people think of, can, well, I, some people I've spoken to recently have mentioned that they think of consultants almost as advisors, which you have to just kind of be careful because that is a different uh, title, you know, like advisor, mentor, consultant, they all kind of relate in some way. I'm guilty. Uh, it's me that she's talking about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they are different roles in your company and you have to establish them as such because, um, you know, you might realize, oh, I'm working with this consultant and they'd be a great advisor. That I completely encourage. You know, if, if you're realizing that they have a lot of influence and they're helping you make a lot of business decisions and um, then go for it, that's a great opportunity there. But um, realize, you know, consultants are people that you're paying to be there and they have a skill set. Whereas advisors, um, that's a little bit of a difference payout or, you know, sometimes they're not being paid at all and they're just there to advise. Um, and it's a different opportunity. 
um, and they're not constantly going to be working with you. Whereas consult consultants are an extension of your team, as we mentioned, like they are there all the time, 24 seven, whenever you need them, maybe not 24 seven. I might get some people be like, I am not available at one in the morning, but <laughs> you'll myself. find some that will. <laughs> <laughs> also true. Also true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh most of the time you won't um people like to have a life you know <laughs> but yeah i just i think there's definitely a difference so you need to establish that as well but overall i think what we're trying to get across is consultants have um they have a purpose and they are not someone or a profession that you should be afraid of um and they are there to help you better your company and find the weaknesses, evaluate them and tackle them and, and move on. So, um, you know, that's just what we're trying to say here. Just jump on in. It's always time to bring in the pros, whether you're a startup or, you know, a a fully fledged company that's been around for years, it's always okay to ask for help. And those consultants are there to help you. And I wonder, you know, Tamara, I wonder if like where this comes from, you know, that people are so afraid of consultants. You ever think about that? Like I just. It's somebody that's on the outside that's coming into like a barrier of like, you know, a CEO or an executive in the company is thinking, oh my God, somebody's coming in to see all of my skeletons, right? They're going to pull apart every bad decision I ever made. And they're going to make me feel like poo for it. In, gen- in, in a generalized sense, they will go through like the company and it's really only to benefit you in the long run, right? So just know and take everything that they say as surface level, like here's the changes that we're going to make from here on out. You know, we care about what happened a couple of years ago because obviously that that is important information for us to learn from. But in the end, when a consultant is coming in there, they're only looking towards the future and whatever they can do to build on that. And so I definitely think that there's just a a cloud against consultants for some reason, which doesn't make sense to me at all, because I'm like, if somebody's better at something than I am, 100% come in and help me, you know? But I feel like a lot of people are literally very cautious in a sense of who they bring into the fold of their business, which is okay. So like we said before, do your due diligence, right? Learn more about that person before bringing them in, but also know that it's okay. It's okay to open up your skeletons and let people see what's going on. I feel like you're a therapist today. You're like, it's okay. You, can- you know, I've, I've been watching, what is that show? There's um, Shrinking, really good show out there. Um, but I, I think he's he's coming into me as far as his, his therapist side. He's a little crazier than I am. But uh, I think it's just, it's important for people to just know that it's okay to have other people come into the company and assess how things are going. That's totally fine. People are doing that with investors. You might as well let a consultant come in. They're they're a lot less harder to deal with than an investor. <laughs> in my opinion, sorry, investors that are out there. <laughs> I mean, realize that a consultant, you can let go and, and move on if you don't like what's happening. Totally. You have a lot <laughs> well, more control. <laughs> definitely some more control. So um, I think I agree completely. Uh, but hopefully after listening to this episode, you're able to reevaluate your needs. Um, and also just, you know, truly take the time, the, the part that I cannot stress enough, take the time to understand who you're working with, call those people that they've already spoken to. And, you know, they're saying, oh, I've got all these different clients. Well, then be like, can I have some of those names? Cause I want to talk to them and see what their experience has been. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't just depend on, you know, reviews online or what it says on their website, because people can fake that if they want to, if, a, if a, they want to put in there, not encouraged, you know, that's why you, we pull in Google reviews where you can't change them. <laughs> but if they're, you know, it's very easy to make that false information. So you want to vet them and, and call them and see for yourself. So, Yeah. Ask them what ideas they have for your company too, you know, like right off the bat, like, Hey, you saw my company, you saw my website. Tell me what you got. Put them on stage because the right people will come out with the best ideas right then and there. No, that's a great idea that, I mean, definitely ask them right away. So you've seen what we do. 
or or even just you know quit i'd be like <laughs> i'd quiz them what do i do <laughs> what, what does your company do or what have you seen um uh, on my website what can you tell me we do as a company and and see what they say see if they've done the research on you cuz that's always a great indicator if they're truly someone that's going to work hard for you if they've taken the time out of their day to um to evaluate you beforehand so I think that's all we have to say about this. I mean, it's a pretty uh, straightforward conversation, but it was also really important for us to say it because it's something that we're passionate about because, you know, we just think that there's such great professionals out there that have so much to offer and people need to lean into these resources. So, um, but I, you know, I'd like to wrap up the episode by thanking our sponsor, Uptime Health. Um, if you'd like to learn more, you can visit uptimehealth.com. Um, I know this was a short episode, but hopefully it was informational and um, everyone don't forget to subscribe to our podcast or comment below if you have any questions for us. Thank you. And ask for help.